today's question, detoxing. Can I push through the illness? What can we do when we start feeling lightheaded and or weak? Can you drink or take herbs during the fast? So we've got this question a few times. Yes. Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching Healthy Alternative. Today we have something special lined up. We asked the community, what is it about fasting that you either don't understand, you need more clarification on, whether it's a big, a long-term goal, short-term goal, whatever the case may be, and we wanna hear from you all. What are the questions, what are you guys struggling with? So today I'm gonna to be going over several of these questions and hopefully there's an answer in there for you. All right, so our first question today is, is it okay to use key lime juice, a capful infused in your water, or just use the whole fruit to infuse your water? So this question is in relation to my recommendation to drink and consume infused water, all right? And uh, I highly recommend that if you guys are going to create infused water for yourself, you do not want to extract juice directly from something whether you're juicing it or getting a cap from the you know that key lime juice can sometimes come in a container what you want to do is get yourself a key lime lime lemon cucumber whatever fruit you want to use you slice the real fruit and then you let it cold steep in the water for uh at least four hours okay so the next question comes from a member and i'm going to kind of summarize because it was a big post here but basically we have somebody who's dealing with hypoglycemia and they're having low energy after the fast. So the question is, if I don't consume only water, I feel like a failure cheating on my fast. So I usually get short, get cut short before my goal. Any suggestions or does anyone else have that problem? So here's the thing, we're individuals. With the AHA community, I have to teach to you guys on a general level, right? Because I can't speak to literally tens of thousands of people individually. What you all need to learn to do is get familiar with the fasting process, your body, and what's gonna work specifically for you. So you take the general practices that I teach and you can then tweak them and customize them to your particular situation. I would highly recommend that you look into uh, the essential oils in order to help to regulate that hypoglycemia. You don't, that's not something you just have to deal with, okay? So uh, I, would, I would recommend either joining our essential oil group on Facebook called AHA Essential Oils, or if you wanna make a post in the group and say, hey, how do I, is there essential oil I could use for hypoglycemia? And then if you wanna tag Shell B, she'll go ahead and give you the oil that you need to help deal with that. So um, I would say that if, you're, if your goal is a pure water fast and you can't do a pure water fast for a reason like this, this is not a failure. I understand the zero to 100 mentality where you think you have to do something 100% or you're not gonna get any benefit. That's just simply not true. You could actually do something at 80% efficiency and still get great benefit. It all depends on what it is you're putting your energy towards. When it comes to fasting, because it's such an over the top beneficial practice, even if you do 50% well on your fast you're still going to get such great benefit from it that you'll feel like you want to keep doing it so that is a that's definitely just a mental struggle um physically speaking you're still going to get great benefit from fasting so i wouldn't even worry about it as a matter of fact in order to help your mental what i would recommend go into your fasting knowing that you're going to utilize like some infused water or some fruit juice or whatever the case may be, and just plan for that. That way you can help support yourself. But I think if you grab um, the proper essential oil, I don't know off the top of my head, if you grab the proper essential oil to couple with your fasting, you might find that you don't even have this problem. And then also I'll say over time, as you do your fasting, the longer you fast, you'll, you'll find that your body starts to normalize and you don't even have the hypoglycemia anymore. Okay, the next question, can we use root brand products while fasting? Yes, absolutely you can. So we are actually affiliated with a company called the Root Wellness Brand. The, the goal of the root brands is to make sure that they are creating nutraceutical products, which are, you know, we're talking holistic, well-sourced, uh, um, specially formulated nutritional supplements that are designed to help uh, get to the root cause of issues going on with your system to the point where eventually you won't even need the products anymore if you continue to maintain your lifestyle. They're all about root change, which is why we decided to partner with them. 
Now, with that being said, we teach utilizing root products in a lot of our challenges. So whether it's the R72, the 21 day fasting challenge, or even the juice fasting challenge, we always do promote using certain root products to help support you all. So for example, Clean Slate is one of those products you could use in any of our challenge and almost all of the fasting protocols except for dry fasting, okay? But what Clean Slate does is it goes in and it cleans the, the, uh, the, the very small nano-sized particulates in the system that typically get overlooked. Uh, we're talking heavy metals, contaminants, glyphosates, uh, uh, allergens, etc. It's able to go in there and scrub, do that deep cleaning, and then it's going to help revitalize the liver so that the liver is able to absorb nutrients more efficiently. So when you couple Clean Slate with other root products, you actually get more benefit out of them. Then you have Zero M, which is designed to help cognitive function. So it's, we're talking memory, clarity of mind, as well as uh, reconnecting severed neural pathways. In addition to that, helps to boost uh, serotonin production, melatonin production, dopamine production. That way you're not going to social media to get your dopamine hits. That way you're not going to a product or a sleeping pill in order to sleep better. Um, you, your, your body will actually start manufacturing these, these chemicals naturally, as it should be. So the last product that we almost always recommend with Root, which they've got a tremendous lineup of products at this point, uh, but it is their Restore product. The Restore product is designed to help with the gut. So where you might come into you know, a couple issues with the Restore product as far as the fasting protocol, you might not wanna use the Restore product when you're doing your pure water fasting because, it, uh, you know, because it's, a, uh, it's kind of like a drink or a pouch, it's a sachet. However, you can if you want to. You can if you want to. It is not going to hinder the benefit of the water fast. It's just for those water fasting purists, they may not want to take that. But everything else is uh, perfectly fine to take. I mean, they're all perfectly fine to take. We've tested it. We've talked to the company. Um, we've talked to the, the doctor that formulated the products. We've asked specific questions about taking the products and fasting. And so far, we are all in the clear. We've been using the products for two years now. Um, many people in the community have been using them, and they only see benefit. So we haven't seen any issues at all. All right, so our next question. It was said that we do the flush so that the toxins will have an, a way to exit the body. So the flush she's talking about is the liver and gallbladder flush, okay? Now, with the consumption of just water, will it be days that we, we may not have bowel movements? I've been wondering about that. Please explain. So, first, the liver and gallbladder flush is the flush that she's talking about. So, with the liver gallbladder flush, the goal of it is to revitalize the liver, move uh, chemicals and toxins and sludge and mucus and contaminants and... Um, crystals out of the liver, out of those tubes, so that the liver can function, you know, more um, more efficiently. During the liver flush, there is a recommendation to do either a water enema or a colonic. The point of that is to make sure that um, when you do the flush, all of the stones and all the material and contaminants that the liver releases is also released from your body entirely. What you don't want to do is try to fast while doing the liver flush. That does not work. So I wanna make that clear to you because the, the question seems to insinuate that maybe your the liver flush and this fasting is going hand in hand. That might not be the case, but I just wanna make sure we understand that we do not do the liver flush while we are fasting. Now, with the consumption of just water, will there be days where you don't have bowel movements? Absolutely, right? There are going to be many days where you're not going to have bowel movements. Why? Because when you start fasting, you're not eating and you don't have that pressure in your system to force the fecal matter out. Most of us do not have high functioning bowels. Okay. They're weak. They're poor. They're low functioning. We've, we've dealt with extreme constipation for years. And because of all of this, when you start fasting, you get to see essentially the state of your intestine, your, your bowels. We, we get to see how well your digestive works. You'll probably have a bowel movement day one that you start the fast, and then you might go a few days without it. Those few days could be 
two days, it could be 10 days, depending on how long you're fasting and where you are in your journey, what you consume prior to fasting. There's a lot of different factors. I've also had people say that they have a bowel movement every single day of their fast. So it just depends on you, but it is very common for the bowels to slow. I would say that there's nothing to worry about unless you feel uh, very uncomfortable or very ill. If you are on your fast and you haven't had a bowel movement for five, six days, whatever the case may be, and you are feeling extremely ill, there's a good opportunity that there, there's a good chance that you need to flush. So you either need to force a bowel movement or you need to go and get a colonic or do an enema. One of the ways that I like to, you know, kind of force bowel movements is through the use of the AHA caster pack. The caster pack is a cotton pad that you uh, put castor oil, very special castor oil on. You put that right underneath where your, where your liver would go, right? You put it on top of the skin where your liver would go on the right-hand side of the body, and then you sleep with it. That will slowly seep, seep into your skin overnight, and it will stimulate the bowels so that you can have a bowel movement. That's one way. If you guys want something more like a laxative, you can actually take the oil that is included in the caster pack, take a tablespoon of the oil by mouth, and force a bowel movement. I do want to say, make sure that you are up on your water intake when, if you're going to use it as a laxative, because you're going to lose a lot of water when you, when you start to flush. But those two, that's, that, those are great ways to get your bowels going if you're not having bowel movements or even if you want to get ahead of the curve and say, I'm going to start fasting. I did the prep. I did everything right. What tools can I use to help avoid issues? That caster pack is going to be a major, major benefit. All right. Okay. So this question is more of a statement, but I'm going to address it. Detoxing. Can I push through the illness? Now, this is a very interesting statement because we used to get this a lot when the brand was very new. People were very uneducated about detox symptoms. Nowadays, we don't get this question as much or, you know, but when people are either new or just simply haven't been well versed in the information, this always comes up. Here's the thing. When you fast, you are going to experience detox symptoms. So that would be the illness that this person is referring to. It comes in every single form imaginable. You can experience such immense pain. You can experience really dull pain. You can experience flu-like symptoms, headaches, mucus, run the gambit. It, it, when any time that your body is detoxing, you respond with some sort of detox symptom. And that is what we are taught in the mainstream to attack, attack these symptoms. What we're not understanding is these symptoms are actually detox symptoms. It's your body working to deal with whatever is going on in your system. When we are in tune with ourselves, we see that, oh, my nose is stopped up. You have a couple different options here. You could say, okay, I just changed my environment, which means there must be something in the air in this environment that's not good for me. Let me remove myself from this environment. It could literally be that simple, right? Um, also, there are different essential oils that you could use to help to move the mucus out of your system because you may just simply uh, need to help the body get that mucus out. Mucus is going to trap contamination, uh, whether it's in your nostrils or in your mouth or already in your system floating around. It's going to trap that contamination and then it's going to usher it out through different methods, whether it's your nose, your mouth, your anus, etc. So helping the body and moving that out may also be the key. So the goal here when it comes to detox symptoms is number one, understanding them. Number two, learning how to properly support the body depending on what detox symptom that you are dealing with. And lastly, don't freak out and understand that yes, this is part of the process. Meaning if you were perfectly fine and then all of a sudden you start fasting or you're starting some dietary change or you're starting a new supplement and now all of a sudden you feel something, you can almost, almost guarantee that it is associated with whatever therapy you're doing. That's not 100%, okay? Sometimes there can be outside forces outside of you detoxing or doing a therapy that could cause you to feel unwell. However, if we understand how to support the body depending on what is going on, whether it's a headache and you need some peppermint or whether you're very sluggish and the energy is low and you need to, to boost your energy with uh, maybe putting some peppermint in your water um, or maybe 
you're not sleeping well at night and you need either some lavender to go between your toes or on your bed linen or even uh, some juniper berry to, you know, take some juniper berry to help you sleep better and more soundly. Whatever the, 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 the detox symptom is, the goal would be to support the body in removing the contamination associated with that detox symptom. And of course, you guys can come join ahacommunities.com, www.ahacommunities.com, and then you guys can learn some of these, these skills by just simply asking questions. One of the things I mentioned in one of our other questions is we like to, we like to, uh, an ounce of pre uh, prevention is better than a pound of cure. We like to get ahead of the issues, the detox symptoms, with our protocols and our strategies so that you guys have less uh, detox symptoms, they're less frequent, they're less intense. Okay, so I mentioned earlier our uh, castor oil pack that you guys can purchase from healthyalternative.org. It's in the shop. The castor pack, just wearing that every night before you go to sleep will help, you, help aid in um, the release of toxins so that you don't get harsh detox symptoms. We also de developed a detox tea. So we have a full body detox tea that is designed to help facilitate the flushing of the system. You could do this ahead of time so that you don't have harsh detox symptoms. You can also do this if you're currently experiencing harsh detox symptoms. So there's some amazing tools we have prepared for you guys to help support you. Hopefully this answers your question. You could push through unless you feel like you absolutely can't. Then in that case, I would recommend either breaking your fast, um, rehydrating yourself, getting some juice, something of that nature to help slow down that detox uh, symptom or that detox effect. Then once you recover a little bit, you can go back into your fasting. Today's question, can we consume non-caffeinated herbal teas? Here's the thing. Non-caffeinated herbal teas, medicinal teas, should always be beneficial to you. So, you know, whether it's chamomile, if you want to get yourself some chamomile, uh, you know, turn that into a nice tea to help you sleep, that is perfectly fine, okay? We want to make sure that we are purchasing loose leaf tea. That's important. So, I'm not going to say all herbal tea that is non-caffeinated is beneficial because that's not true. We want to focus heavy on minimal processing. So loose leaf tea, where you're going to essentially boil whatever the leaves are, and then you're probably going to strain it yourself. Um, and then also make sure that whatever tea you choose has some type of beneficial uh, effect that's going to help aid you in whatever you have going on, just so it's not like a, a taste thing. Like if we're going to drink a herbal tea on our fest, let's do it in a beneficial way. AHA has developed some amazing herbal teas. One tea that I would recommend in this case would be the appetite suppressant tea. It works perfectly with the whole process, and that's why we chose it. So you are fasting, you're tired of just drinking plain water, you want something extra, grab one of the AHA appetite suppressant teas. You guys can find those in the, um, the, the shop on a healthyalternative.org, and it has hibiscus in it for flavoring. Now, does hibiscus have great herbal medicinal benefits? Yes, it does. However, what we find is a lot of people don't take into fact that some of these blends are nasty. So we put together an herbal blend that not only is effective at suppressing the appetite, which is great for those who are fasting, but also we made it taste good. So now you have a sippable tea. You don't have to worry about adding any sweeteners or anything like that. You're fasting. You're getting support with your fasting. And then there's a plethora of other benefits you get from nourishing your, your cells with a tea like this that you wouldn't get if you were just eating. So uh, that's what I would suggest as it relates to that. What can we do when we start feeling lightheaded and or weak? So here's a simple solution. Get yourself some peppermint essential oil, or you can get orange or grapefruit or any of those like uplifting oils, and then you just put a little bit behind your uh, ears or uh, your temples, or you can breathe it in. So you could put it in a diffuser, and um, that's a way in just a in a quick moment, you can get a little relief. Another thing that you could do, especially if you know that this is going to happen on a regular basis, you can actually get um, an essential oil that will help with low blood pressure. So uh, what you could do is create a post on um, www.ahacommunities.com. You say, hey, 
What essential oil will help regulate low blood pressure? And then if you want, you could tag Shell B in there. But the, but but uh, by utilizing an essential oil that helps to increase blood pressure or help to regulate low blood pressure, you can kind of combat that that um, feeling of lightheadedness because typically you at that time when you're feeling that, you probably have low blood pressure. Now, this will tend to go away with time as you continue to fast and you continue to do the right things, eating the proper foods, doing your prep work, doing a proper refeed, you'll find that these types of issues go away. But we do like to pro provide solutions for you guys in real time. And also, if you have a reoccurring issue that you know you're going to be dealing with, you can prepare before you even start your fast. And that way you have tools to be successful. In addition to you know the essential oils, you guys can also utilize the product called Zero In. OK, now, if you guys decide to purchase some zero in, you're going to you're going to go to the root wellness brands. But you need a an affiliate code if you want to purchase this and you just simply put in a, a healthy alternative, no space. And that is the affiliate code so that you could purchase. You can't purchase otherwise. But if you guys decide to use zero in, you could take it as a daily supplement. It has no impact on your fasting. And what it does is it gives you access to the system that allows you to regulate energy um clarity of mind memory you you get access to so many more tools that your body already has but are either low functioning or you've been supplementing the the these functionalities with something else whether it's coffee or you know sleeping medication or whatever and so now the body doesn't do it anymore this supplement helps you be in the driver's seat so that you can start regulating your hormones and your chemistry much more efficiently. You get what you need when you need it. And so this is a great complement to fasting, especially if you're dealing with headaches or dizziness. The next question, how do I incorporate dry fasting, which makes fasting easier into my day and still drink enough water? So these two things, it's like mixing oil and water. OK, you don't combine dry fasting with your your water uh, that, that they just they they just don't go together. If you are uh, referring to a protocol where you could dry fast for a part of the day and then you'd be drinking for a part of the day, you would not be trying to hit any goal of how much water you should be drinking that day. OK, when you dry fast. It is akin to when you water fast, the way that your body kind of shut down digestive processes um, and, and then you need to give your body time to ramp those processes back up. So, for example, with water fasting, you've been water fasting for three days. You go to start eating again. The last thing you would ever want to do is go and have like food from a Chinese buffet. We're talking highly processed foods, tons of chemicals, hard for the body to digest. And you're going to undo a lot of the benefit you got from your fast. Same thing with dry fasting. When you go from dry fasting to drinking water, because that's how you break your dry fast, you always break it with water. If you go to try and guzzle a whole bunch of water, it's like having a, a meal at the Chinese buffet, okay? You always have to come off your dry fasting, sipping your water slowly and giving your body time to adjust. So you don't wanna combine daily dry fasting with trying to get like a gallon of water in a day. Those two just don't make sense together. What I would highly recommend if your if your deal is that you want to utilize dry fasting on a, on a daily basis, but also incorporate a little water later on, then you want to make sure to focus on getting uh, water that's going to be hydrating. That That's going to be the goal. Like you're going to drink less water, but you're going to make sure that it's prepared well and very hydrating. So the way that you can increase the hydration levels of your water is either by adding like chia seeds to your water before you consume it. Or you could also do uh, sun charging your water, which is my, my favorite method, where you take some distilled water, you put it in a clear glass jar with either a glass lid, a cork, or a cheesecloth, or something inert, not plastic, not metal. You set that outside and you allow the sun to literally shine its light through the water for a minimum, I would say, of at least four hours. You could do it all day. I mean, the longer, the better, really. And once that once the sun has had an opportunity to charge that water, the, the ionization of the water, the structure of the water will change. It will become more hydrating. So therefore, you could drink less of it and still get a massive hydration you know, benefit. So uh, those are some good suggestions for you. Uh, I know incorporating dry fast and water is is, a, is like a major key if you can make it make sense. 
But um, just be careful. Don't ever over drink after your dry fast. Okay, so this next question is in reference to uh, the liver and gallbladder flush by Andreas Moritz that we teach. And it goes, I didn't do the liver gallbladder flush bowel issues. And I made some bad choices this week with sugar. Will my symptoms be worse being though I didn't detox? Also, can I do a colonic during the water fast and how often should I do an enema? So with the liver and gallbladder flush, the point of the flush is to help prepare you for your fasting. That's the reason why we tell you guys to do it. If you are looking to do some long-term fasting, I think uh, this individual is in our 21-day fasting challenge. If you're doing some long-term fasting and you don't do the liver gallbladder flush, that's okay. However, what, what makes me nervous is the fact that you have been you know, making some bad choices with your eating habits and with sugar and things of that nature. You can obviously get through a lot of these things. You can will yourself through it. But one of the reasons why a lot of us are here in the community looking for support is because we have low motivation or low willpower, right? Or we have a high food addiction. So we don't really want to play these games when it comes to a long-term fast. I highly recommend that you all, if you're going to do a long-term fast, you do a proper uh, preparation. It's okay for to, to not be perfect, but if you know you're way off the course, it's a good idea to keep practicing till you get you know, more in alignment and then pursue your long-term fast. But yes, if you go into a long-term fast without doing the proper preparation, your, your detox symptoms are definitely going to be worse. Okay. Now, once you are in the mix of things, can you do a colonic during the fast or an enema? Yes, you can. I don't recommend overdoing it, right? So if you're doing like one enema or one colonic per week, that would probably be okay. You can actually talk to your uh, colon hydrotherapist about frequency and what would be safe to, to do. But it's not something you want to be doing like daily, all right? But if you just want, okay, I've been fasting for a while I feel like I should do it. One indicator is if you feel really ill for a period of time, maybe it's a day or even more, and you feel really, really ill, oftentimes it's because you need to move the bowels. So if you know your bowels have not moved and you're feeling really ill, this might be a good opportunity or a good sign that it's time to do a enema or a colonic. So hopefully that is helpful for you. Okay, so the next question is more of a statement. Strategies to stay focused. So they're looking for strategies to stay focused. I've done three days before and it seems to, I seem to go to bed early or laze around, but I know that's not going to work for longer fast, uh, juice fast, uh, I feel great. So if you are trying to utilize just being lazy or just sleeping around in order to fast, that is a great strategy for short fasting. It's also a great strategy for long-term fasting if you're not working, if it's the holidays, or if you're willing to use some PTO and take some time off work to focus on your health and wellness a week or two, then you can laze around a lot. You can laze around a lot, you can sleep a lot, and um, there are gonna be days where you do have high energy and you're gonna wanna get up and do something, and you can take advantage of that. For 21-day fasting or you know something much longer, this probably will not work. So I agree with you. That said, what I personally do is I set goals. Most of us have goals, things we want to accomplish that we've been putting out for years. When you start fasting, you have to think you recoup a tremendous amount of time. You're not grocery shopping anymore. You're not cooking anymore. You're not using the bathroom as much. You're not taking the time to eat. You're not taking the time to clean up. So on a daily basis, you're earning you know 30 minutes, an extra hour, two hours, whatever the case may be, that you now can put towards something else. So there's a couple ways to approach this. There's a more lazy way. You could just set up a list of different movies or documentaries that you want to dive into while you're fasting. And you can maybe utilize that once a day. You're going to sit down and watch a documentary. Or you're going to learn about something that you've been meaning to learn about or research something you've been meaning to research. What I want you guys to do is find a project. Okay, so maybe you want to step it up a notch. You don't want to just laze around, watch TV. You want to step it up. Find a project, something that you've been putting off. Develop a new skill. You know, oddly enough, my brother uh, learned how to use chopsticks while he was fasting. You know, everybody's different. Some people pick up the guitar and start learning guitar. 
The goal here is to take that time that we would typically spend towards eating and fill it with something that's going to be productive. I, I really would prefer you guys to do something productive versus something like vegging out on, you know, reality TV. Um, what I did was I continued to do a lot of research. So I was able to spend a tremendous amount. I would research for 10 to 16 hours every day. But that's me. I'm different, right? Another thing I learned was cooking. I knew that to, to get the benefits of what I wanted to uh, get from fasting and maintain it, I, I had to change my diet. So I started learning how to cook through videos. There was also some weird satisfying effect of me watching these cooking videos and uh, while I was fasting. So I would take notes. I would talk about what it is I wanted to, what meals I wanted to make, and I would prepare for my next meal coming off of my fast. You know, typically you want it to be something high water content, plant based. So, you know, I would look into like doing raw food or, you know, different fruits. Sometimes I would order like fruit boxes to be ready for when I come, come off my fast. But regardless of what you guys decide to do or how you decide to approach it, that's a good opportunity to start learning about changing your dietary habits and, and, you know, maybe getting new equipment and all that type of stuff. So research is a great way to do it. Uh, picking up something like reading books. If you're not typically used to reading books, you'd be you'd be surprised that if you find a good genre or some some books or, or a topic that's very interesting to you, how quickly you can lose time. OK, so the goal here is really just losing t track of time, doing something productive, doing something you enjoy. You can get out of the house and go to the park and meditate or ground or, you know, sun charge or whatever the case may be. There's so many different options out there. You just got to get uncomfortable because we're typically used to going to work, eating our lunch, uh, coming home from work, having a snack, thinking about what we're going to eat next. And we spend all that extra time thinking about and interacting with food that when we don't have that, we don't know what to do with our time. So hopefully this helps you out a little bit. And, um, you know, if not, just keep, you know, keep asking questions, clarifying questions. Uh, we are here to help support you all. Next question. My throat still feels dry when water fasting, and that's even when drinking sun water. Any tips or is this common? So uh, first, we, we obviously recommend a gallon of distilled water each day when you're doing your fasting. If you are drinking a gallon of distilled water and you still feel thirsty or your mouth feels dry, this typically will happen if, you have n if, if you're adjusting. If you, have, if you haven't been doing this for at least 10 days, you're definitely still adjusting, okay? I have found that it takes about 10 days for the body to adjust. So even though you're drinking a gallon of water, your body is still adjusting. This is one of those things where it's kind of like consistency is key. If you are doing your gallon of distilled water and you've, uh, you, you never really get to that 10 day mark, you might find that every time you fast, you tend to have this issue. Or if you only do the gallon when you're fasting and you're not fasting that often, you might find that you always have this issue. So I would say be consistent, do your gallon of water a day, look forward to doing it for at least 10 days to, to see if you start noticing a change. But also um, when you're not fasting, I would also encourage you to keep doing that. The fact that you're doing the sun water, that is great. I have not found that the sun water is a cheat code for really getting around this. Um, you can try infused water. That may help. Um, there's many different ways to like approach the water. But I, I find that time is the best solution for this one. Okay. So it is common. And um, you could always utilize like a mint leaf or something like that to stimulate a little saliva. Uh, you know, so you could add that to your water or you can even chew on it. Okay. I'm not a huge advocate of that type of advice because chewing does stimulate the digestive system. But if this is a major annoyance for you, then this might be a good option finding something medicinal to chew on, uh, to help get you past it. But I find that time usually rectifies this issue. Okay, our next question, how do you combat muscle memory of eating your feelings while fasting? What can you do about toxic tongue and other than brushing your teeth? Toxic tongue has been the lead cause for me to break my fast. So two very good questions. You know, the, the, uh, the, the comfortability of eating your feelings 
it's going that is a that is a whole we have an entire course for that okay number one it's very common that people eat their feelings we are emotional eaters holistically right like especially in the united states but because everything that we do whether it's a birthday a funeral a holiday a bad day a good day you just got the promotion you just lost your job we eat with everything so we are major emotional eaters the first thing that you could do towards combating this is determining what your triggers are right if you if you know that you know dealing with this particular person triggers you and then you want to comfort yourself with food you can work on the relationship with that person either avoiding them or building a better relationship or setting boundaries with that person same thing with the job you know maybe you need to go have a talk with your with your leadership and um, express yourself so that you can build a healthier you know environment for yourself at work whatever the case may be one of the best ways to approach this initially is try to get to root causes if we can determine what we what's triggering us to cause us to want to cope with food like who or what is actually causing us to go to food then if we can rectify that issue then we don't even have to worry about the food itself right because it's a it's a core issue um also if, if if you are if you are very interested in digging like way deeper into this i highly recommend you join our 40-day wellness program okay Stephen Michael put together the the majority of that program. I really was played a supporting role, but we took his life experience because he deals with a, a tremendous amount of this type of issue personally. You know, using food as a coping mechanism. I mean, he he was almost 400 pounds at one point. Using food as a coping mechanism was definitely one of his skill sets. He had to get quiet and sit with himself and learn what can I do to to uh build better healthier coping mechanisms and we go through that in depth i mean that that to that course is massive um you guys can actually find that course on the aha wellness academy.com so you go to aha wellness academy.com and then in the store you can find the 40-day wellness course if you want to really genuinely because i can't even get to every not even close to everything in this this response i would say go and take that course um, now, as far as the the detox tongue or detox breath, the way to combat this is really like work you do ahead of time. Okay, if you um, if you're doing preparation for your fast, well, first of all, you should be doing preparation for your fast. During that time, you want to start using your caster pack. Okay, get yourself an AHA caster pack. They're located in our shop, uh, and wear that leading up to the fast start. Also, I would recommend getting the detox teas. So we have a bundle deal. You get the detox teas. Start taking those teas in preparation for your fast. We also, in our in our 21 day challenge, we teach a liver gallbladder flush that you could do ahead of time to help remove the toxicity from your system. But one of the most simplistic ways that we have found to to aid with this is using the root uh, clean slate. Okay. So the Root Wellness brand has a product called Clean Slate, and it seems to be extremely good at balancing out that toxicity of the mouth when you're detoxing. So that probably will be, you know, something that you kind of like a quick fix, um, or maybe you're already fasting, it's too late, you can't prep. This is something you could do to, to aid you. Now, obviously, there's there's some tools that I, got, I mentioned to you guys you could use. Um, you could get yourself a copper tongue scraper, and also you could get yourself some food grade hydrogen peroxide. You want to either get 3% or dilute whatever you have down to 3% and you want to deburr your mouth with some food grade hydrogen peroxide, hit it with your copper tongue scraper and then you could also add some essential oils to your water like spearmint, you know, and th those things will help. It may not completely solve the issue. It may come back later on in the day. You might have to do it twice a day. But if you combine all of these, um, all of these suggestions, I can't see where you really even have to deal with the detox tongue. Uh, so hopefully you you start implementing some of these strategies and then you'll build out what makes sense for you. But what I will say is detox tongue actually does go away more per like permanently as you detox your body. OK, so as your body becomes more in harmony, 
you could you'll find later on down the road you're fasting, you're eating well when you're when you are eating, and then you'll find when you're fasting you're not you're not even experiencing detox zone. Today's question: Can I push through detoxing to reach my goal? What if I do the work but I don't get my desired result? Or what if I do reach my desired wellness goal? Then what? So three questions, um, kind of separate questions, but kind of connected too. Can I push through detoxing to reach my goal? I think you have to push through detoxing to reach your goal. Anytime you're looking to achieve anything great in your life, there's going to be a certain level of, of resistance for you achieving that goal. It's almost like a, uh, a prerequisite for having success. People are not able to, to achieve success in life without having some sort of friction and that's just the way things are. So mentally preparing yourself for the challenges and obstacles to come is a great thing because you basically have to, all right? Now, when it comes to detoxing, the goal here is to make sure that you are not pushing through detox symptoms that are too severe or too extreme. There is a level, there is a time when you need to pull up and stop the, the harsh detox symptoms. Right, either by breaking your fast with some vegetable broth or putting some uh, infused water, you know, having some infused water, or even having some fruit juice, whatever the case may be, or herbal tea, whatever you need. There are cases when it is too extreme, whether you can't perform at work or whether you feel really, really ill or whether you, you know, feel like you're going to pass out or faint. And this will be a great option to go ahead and just pull up on that fast a little bit so you're not pushing too hard. Okay. Now, most people are going to experience a high level of discomfort during their fast at some point. And if you feel though you could push through it, that's fine. If you feel like you can't push through it, that's also fine. All right. This is not a race. This is we're not trying to get to the end as quickly as possible. As a matter of fact, I would I would I would implore you to focus your energy on the journey and not the outcome. We need to identify the outcome. We need to know what we are what we are shooting for, but you this goes to the kind of last question, what do you do once you reach your desired outcome? Well, it never really ends. And I'm not telling you that to discourage you. I'm telling you that to encourage you when you get to the top of that mountain, there's going to it's going to be the bottom of another mountain, okay? So what I want you what I want to encourage you to do is focus your energy on the journey and the benefit of the journey and the fun of the journey and not the destination itself. If you start practicing that right now, you won't find yourself trapped once you reach that goal. So for example, if your goal is to lose 40 pounds, well, that's a pretty simple task to do if you're utilizing our methodology. So you do within a month, you lose your 40 pounds and now what, right? So, so I like to say something like this. Your goal should be associated with holistic wellness. So your goal is not necessarily lose the weight, but your goal is to be healthy. And then that way, once you lose the weight, you're, you still got work to do because you got to maintain your eating habits at the very least to stay healthy and be healthy. Right. And, and you could dig much deeper into that. We actually have an exercise. We call it the heaven and the hell, which helps you to develop, you know, what do you do after you reach your wellness goal? Because you're going to have a list of different goals and they're going to be much deeper than just the surface level things. Also, what I will say is as you guys start going through this wellness journey and you start reaching the top of those mountains, you'll find that your desires change, what you want changes. And so you will naturally start to develop habits that are going to lead you into like the next thing. So it feels like a problem right now. But trust me, as you start to develop as a person, you become more healthy and all these benefits you get, you'll find new go goals naturally. The last part of your question was, you know, what will you do? Or it was, it was the second it was the second question. But what will you do if you do the work and then you don't get the desired results? Well, if your desired result is weak, if it's not strong enough, they used to say, if your why doesn't make you cry, you need to find a new why. The why is a piece of motivation that we use. It's a tool that we use. If it's not strong, then yeah, you're going to want to quit. And I'm just going to keep it real. Typically, once again, this is why we teach the heaven and hell exercise. But typically, if you have a desire, a goal in mind, if it's for a surface level reason, you could typically dig deeper and find a, di a deeper reason why. Same outcome but a deeper motivation for why you're doing it. And then that way, 
if you do X protocol and you don't get the desired result, you're not going to want to just give up. You're going to want to keep pushing because that Y is so important. It's like oxygen to you. Okay, so there is no, well, what if it doesn't work? It's going to work because that is your belief and that is what your goal is. See, here's the thing. This question presupposes that you can put your time, energy and effort or your 100 percent into getting an outcome and not get it. But that's actually not true. Anytime you give your 100 percent holistically to something, it will happen. It doesn't matter if it happens in the timeline that you expect. But if you're giving your all to something, it will happen. You do have that ability to make anything that you want in this reality come to you. Now, you're going to have to do that through hard work, dedication, consistency, and all those things that make this a journey. But the question, make once again, assumes that you could do all those things and not get your desired outcome. And that's just simply not true. The only time you fail is when you quit. All right. Today's question. Can you drink or take herbs during the fast? So we've got this question a few times. Yes, you can drink and take herbs during the fast. If you're going to drink and take herbs during the fast, we just recommend that you're very intentional about, you know, the herbs that you take. As long as we are taking whole herbs, we are taking organic herb, we're taking well sourced products, right? Then we're okay. And as long as we're taking herbs that are designed for an outcome that's going to help support what we're doing, that's typically going to be detoxification, nourishing of the cells, then we're good to go. AHA actually developed our own herbs. And one of the herbs, which would be great to complement this question, would be the appetite suppressant herbs. Okay, so we've got the AHA appetite suppressant herbs. You can find them on the website at healthyalternative.org. They are in the shop. They are designed to nourish your cells. Nourishing the cells... Um, helps avoid all the energy that goes towards detox or uh, digesting, and it makes it much easier on your liver and the rest of your system. You're just giving the, er the the cells exactly what they need. They're nourished, so you don't get any of the extra bad stuff that your body has to process out when you just do something like that. Plus, we've added hibiscus to our teeth to make it palatable. It's delicious to drink. So you have a, a great product that's going to help suppress the appetite, and it tastes good. All right. But you guys are more than welcome to find your own blends or even create your own blends. Uh, but you can take these while you fast. Today's question. How do you stop yourself from the mental craving to eat? This is a great question. And I love the fact that you put an emphasis on the mental craving to eat because there's a difference between the mental craving to eat and the physical craving to eat. See, you're Physical craving to eat comes from the body actually removing the chemical constituents of the food you're craving. So as your body detox the Snickers bar out, you start to crave the Snickers bar, okay? And that is pretty easy to understand and it's easy to combat if you understand it. For example, when I was doing my fasting, I, I craved um, uh, Sloppy Joe. Now, keep in mind, I hadn't had Sloppy Joe since I was a boy. My mom used to make Sloppy Joe for me when I was a child. I mean, we're talking 15, 20 years ago, easy since I had Sloppy Joe. So how was I experiencing a craving for something I hadn't eaten in so long? It's because you are what you eat. And what you eat becomes a part of your blood and your chemistry. And when you detox that out, you experience a craving. So that's your physical craving. Your mental craving is usually habits. We are very habitual creatures. So at noon, every day, you eat your lunch. You're going to have a mental craving there. You're going to be thinking about what you're going to eat. Oops, I'm fasting. I forgot. And that becomes a mental struggle. We also, when it comes to mental cravings, we, we get triggered. We get triggered by people, places, and things. So, so at, before you even start your fasting, understanding what are these mental triggers, like what, what are the things that trigger me want to eat? And this is why we developed the AHA Journal. Because what you could do with the AHA Fasting Journal is you could create a little space for you to talk about your mental cravings. So, so that way you keep the journal on you. It'll fit in your purse or it'll fit in your bag or fit in your backpack or whatever the case may be. And you just take it out when you have a mental craving. And you look at what caused that mental craving. And you make a list. And as you're making this list, you're going to become more uh, aware of of these things that cause the mental cravings. And then you can start approaching these 
people, places, and things individually to eliminate or dampen the effect they have on you. Now, that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it is. The whole wellness journey, especially when it comes to the mental work, it has to be very intentional. Now, there are some cheats. If you can push yourself through sheer mental fortitude to fast for 10 days or longer on a regular basis, we're talking two, three, four times, then what you'll find is that there is a mental detox that happens. And so that's like a cheat. But the problem is, I'm assuming the mental cravings get you before the 10 days, right? So, um, but if you want to cheat, if you could do it, that's to cheat. You're going to start experiencing mental and emotional detox between day 10 and usually 14 if you're doing a pure water fast, okay? So be intentional about identifying what are the things that are causing you to, um, to kind of triggering you to want to eat approach those things, people, places, and things ahead of time and do your best to just simply deal with that in whatever way I can't, you know, go through all this, you know, this is kind of more of an individual thing. You'll, you'll have to figure it out on your own, but that's a way to get ahead of it. Okay. Um, all of the prep work and things that we do before we actually start the fast help as well. So mentally, as you are prepping for your fast, you could be doing some of this identification work and you can challenge yourself not to eat in those moments when you are being stimulated to want to eat for whatever reason. Even though you're not fasting yet, you could just challenge yourself to avoid eating in that moment. And how long does a moment last? I would say anywhere from 30, 30 minutes to an hour. So if you have a situation going on right now, whatever that situation is, it could just simply be because it's time to eat. Okay, 12 o'clock, it's time to eat. You say, okay, we're not going there today. We're not going there today. And you push that eating window out 30 minutes to an hour. And that's just a great practice you could do during your preparation to help you with the mental uh, challenge, you know, the, the, the desire to want to just, just eat mentally. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, presentation today, going through these questions and giving you guys very detailed answers. If you did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Let us know what other questions you have. I'm going to be regularly updating this so that we have a, an amazing archive that we can go to. You guys can get detailed answers to your questions. And so let me know what it is you want to know next. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time.